Um, we can initially do a still point induction um, depending on the person, right? If somebody comes in and they're still pretty sympathetic and you want to just get them relaxed, you want to, it, it's beneficial for everybody. We've already talked about the benefits of a still point. So you would come in. It's also a good assessment tool to gauge where somebody is physically. From here, what I want you guys to do is visually assess your patient on the table. So, be a multitasker. Um, from here, I can see that her, her left anomen is anteriorized. I can see that it translates right up to her shoulders. Jaw looks a little bit straight, but it also looks declinated on her right hand side. I'm not actually going to do a full treatment. We'll do that this afternoon for each other. But we do still. I come in, check flexion and extension, see how she's moving. As soon as I picked her up, um, her heels are really heavy in my hand. So it tells me a lot about her center of gravity, right? Hands on the stomach, inhibiting. I would just motion palpate the anonymous, see where we are, and then from here, and goes under, and get into the pelvic diaphragm. Okay. From here, there's a bunch of stuff that I can look for. With my inferior hand, my hand that's on her spine, I can sort of rock back and forth and see how things move. I can palpate the SPs of her lumbar spine and see if they're flexed or extended. Right, there's a bunch of stuff I can do from here. Um, her right anonymous sits really heavy in my hand. So it tells me that it's posteriorized, which makes sense if this one was anteriorized, correct? So we can do that. Get a nice release out of this, and then what I would consider doing, um, checking the hips, right? So come in, check the range of motion of her hips, circumduct them, see if there's any areas that catch, she catches right here, okay? So that tells me, again, a lot of information about the glutes, about the anomalies, right? As soon as I bring her leg down and pull, click. Okay, it tells me a lot of information about the city of her psoas. So from here, move their hands down a little bit and I slide up into the respiratory diaphragm. You can tell a ton of information about someone's health from this point as well. Gauge her respiration. Does she breathe shallow? Does she breathe rapidly? You can feel her heart rate from here. Is it low? Is it fast? Is it weak? You can also tell if somebody has heart palpitations from this point. Okay. I feel her heart beating every so often as we quit. Do I feel her intestines gurgling? What do I feel? Okay. So as much as you're doing a technique, you're also just listening. I can feel if her rib cage is moving. Is it stuck in one area? It is. On my posterior hand, when she breathes, her ribs, her floating ribs on her right side don't move. So again, make a mental note. From here, you articulate. I'm going to be working in your chest area close to your sternum. Right? No problem with that. Wonderful. I'm sure you noticed I always had a hand off her. Makes people uncomfortable when you take your hand off from the back. Okay, try and keep constant contact. From here, again, you're assessing many different things. How does she breathe? How does her chest move while she's breathing? How do the clavicles feel? Is there any sort of torsion through the STA? Is there any sort of bogginess in through here? Is the sternum twisted? 
posterior hip, how do they offer dorsal to you? Again, you're assessing the SPs. Are they flexed? Are they extended? Does she look hypotic? Does she look scoliotic? scoliotic? Like, there's many things to assess at this point. Here, also look. How's her thyroid look? Right? How does her hyoid look? And again, talk to your person. I'm going to be moving to your throat now. Are you okay with me working in that area? Come up. So my hand shifted on the back up to the upper cervicals, right near the base of the skull at the OA. This hand's on the higher. Can you move your tongue from side to side for me? How's the pulse in her neck? Is she adenomous? Is there any tissue changes? She's looking pretty relaxed. Good. You can feel for any sort of jaw malalignment at this point, correct? There's a bunch of stuff you can feel. So now we switch to the base of the skull. We're going to get into an OA release. You just hold and we wait. Again, picking up a ton of information here. Do her ears feel level in my hand? The mastoid processes feel level. Looking down at her from a superior angle, does it look like there's any torsion through her cranial bones? Are her eyes fluttering? Or any sort of movement from side to side? Now you're looking for some neurological stuff. Right? So we got our myofascial release. Fingers extended, pointing towards the eyes. And we wait. And we wait for her head to fall into my hands. Whoever's been working on her has done a wonderful job because that didn't take long. Right. Bring her into a neutral position. We don't want to keep the neck in extension. And we do. Our lateral spread through the cell occipitals. And all the while, we're watching for any sort of respiration changes. We're making sure that she's comfortable. She's not breathing too quickly. She's not clenching her teeth as I work. And from here, nice dural tube stretch. <clears throat> she can attest to the fact that with the dural tube stretch, it's not an attraction. I'm not pulling on her neck. It's not a cervical traction. From here, we can go right to a golf hold. I'm going to wait. Personally, what I would do at this point is go back and disengage her sacrum and work on her anonymous. Knowing what we know about this anonymous being anteriorized, this one being posteriorized, there's some sort of pelvic imbalance. So let's address that first, right? So what I'm going to do at this point is take my hand under you and work on your sacrum. Your sacrum is your tail. Okay, in that area. Wonderful. Leg comes across, hand goes between, grab them by the sacrum, leg goes down. Don't fiddle. Quick in and out. If your hand isn't where you want it to be, come on the other side, adjust them and move your hand. Don't roll them to your side and start trying to place your hand on their bum. We don't want to be grabby, okay? It's not a comfortable position for your patient to be in. Forearm flat to the table. We don't stand up and have our arm in their groin. Forearm is flat, and at this point, this hand comes in. We're on L5, and my hand that's on her sacrum 
is going to traction it inferior or caudally, and I'm just stabilizing L5 with my hand here. And all I'm doing is I'm disengaging that area. So I'm giving it a very short lever traction. Again, actually that didn't take long for you. <laughs> I have to say that this is much lighter of whatever I received yesterday. Again, the lighter you touch, the less you're going to engage your patient's sympathetic nervous system. Okay, We aren't palpating with any intention. All we are is we're listening. We're going in and we're listening to what her body has to tell us. So if I actually had a hold of her sacrum, I wouldn't be able to tell you right now that it's rocking very, very quickly from side to side. So what we're going to do, I'm going to place her hand here, and I'm going to place my hand here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push towards the center line. I want you to match my pressure gently. Now, if you can feel your patient pushing their pelvis towards you, way too much we wait. I'm going to wait for her sacrum to calm down, and I'm going to wait for her sacrum to essentially drop into my hand. At this point, you can make small talk. How are you feeling? Look at your patient. If you notice, her cheeks have started to turn red. So we're starting to elicit some sort of a change. Make sure that they're comfortable. Make sure that they're not starting to perspire, that their eyes aren't rolling. <laughs> Just make sure they're not clenching their teeth. Be kind to your patients. And there we go. Next deep breath. Sacrum dropped into my hand. Happy days. Relax. Shift your weight in your stance down. Traction her sacrum. And again, we wait. How are the kids? Do you like bowling? I do like bowling. From here, again, we don't pull our hand out. Leg comes up, roll to the side, hand comes out, leg goes down. Easy peasy, yes? Check the anonymous again. We're standing anteriorized here. So what I'd do again before I got into any cranial stuff is I would start on flipper or sideline. Start doing some hip stuff. Start doing some MET, start doing some mobilizations, work through here, work through psoas. Start engaging some stuff on this side. I don't think she knows how to fire her TA and her psoas on this side. So from here, drop her leg down. What I want you to do is imagine buckling a seatbelt and tighten it right here for me. Brilliant. Pushing me up towards the ceiling. Drop the other leg off the side, or you can get him into a psoas stretch at this point, yes? Yes. Are you want to do it? I was just saying. No, okay. From <laughs> here, that's what you could do. There's a little bit of an improvement. So if he's trying to pull this forward and pull this back, you can get him on this side and have her engage her hamstrings. What is that going to do? Hamstrings are attached to the ischial tuberosity. It's going to pull her pelvis posterior, right? So come in here. And goes under. At this point, I'm on the SI joint. Push your knee into me. Make sure you don't bring her all the way up because now you're in lumbar. So make sure you fall from your force where you want it to go. Okay? I want her force to be right at her SI joint. So when I bring her knee up, as soon as I feel the pressure on my hand that's on her SI, I'm where I want to be. Push your knee. Not a lot of force. 
Otherwise, if you have a big person on your table, I've had a football player almost send me across the room, really, so tell them to gauge the force, okay? <laughs>
again, the whole time we're watching her eyes, making sure they're comfortable, making sure she's not starting to sweat or clenching her jaw. A lot of people won't tell you if they're physically uncomfortable when you work. So be aware. You let go. Gently. Gently, gently. Everything's gentle. Thumbs back in the ears, earlobes out of the way. How are things moving? Not quite symmetrical. We never want to leave the temporals out of symmetry. Hand comes under, stabilize the C spine up at the OA. On the right ear, we go inferior posterior. And we wait. It can be a lengthy process. Never go in with an expectation of getting through pelvis and cranium in one go. If I can get through some of the diaphragms and some dural tube restrictions in the pelvis and actually get up and do a nice dural rock, happy. I'm going to go gently. Can we come back? Do you try to save a certain amount of time at the end of the treatment to start with the cranial then? No. I never go in with an expectation. But never, everybody's different, right? Um, I go in hoping to make a little bit of an improvement. That's what I hope for each time. From here, everything's moving well. I'd go back into a vault hold to reassess. You can tell a lot about somebody even from here. How's their arterial pulse up in the temporals? Yesterday I had my hands on a head and the pulse was great on the right side and helped me nothing on the left. <coughs> Come in for a frontal lift. Very gentle. Middle fingers just on the edge of the eyebrow. I say on the edge of the eyebrow, everybody has a different shaped head. Some people have a narrow frontal bone. So sometimes your fingers will be here. Some people have a wide frontal bone and sometimes your fingers will be here. Just make sure you're on the lateral edges. Now what we do with our fingers is gently come medially and then lift towards the ceiling, okay? The rest of my hands aren't really touching her. Only point I'm going to allow you to have some tensions in your hands while you work. Front of bones lifting, beautiful. Come back in. Reassess. Lovely. She's doing well. So from here, we can do a dural flossing. So again, I'm going to be putting my hands on your lower back. Hand slides under. Okay? Again, it's no fiddling. If it's not quite right, lift again and adjust your hand. Always be mindful of your own posture. Don't hunch over your patients. You're going to breathe on them and it's not going to be good for your back. Especially if you had garlic for lunch, don't breathe on your patients. <laughs> so from here, we feel the flexion and extension, okay? Is it symmetrical? Is it stronger in the sacrum than it is in the OA? And in this instance, it is. So we wait, and we wait for the flexion and the extension. And when we finally get the rhythm, we follow her into flexion, and then just engage the barrier a little bit at the end and hold it and then allow her to go back into extension. And the same thing, follow her into extension, gauge the barrier, and let her go. Again, this is wonderful for people who have scoliosis. Anybody who has herniated discs, anybody who has stenosis, this is a wonderful technique for them.
Yes. Mm -hmm. It's only six to 12 cycles per minute. It's not fast. Children is quicker, but it is not a quick. It's not a quick technique. Did I miss anything, or is that pretty much what we've covered so far? Good. It's an excellent segue into sacral oscillations. So the spinal cord. Um, it needs a little bit of assistance draining. It is a valve system, okay? So from here, what we can do, this is a new technique. You have your patient roll to their tummy. Now I said yesterday that some of the techniques can stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. A lot of what we do stimulates the parasympathetics. If this is done, with the intention of stimulating, you can compress the sacrum and stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. So if somebody has a really important board meeting they need to go to, pump, 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 great, see you later. They won't fall asleep during their meeting. If it isn't, um, you come in, you find the lateral edge of the sacrum, and you come in on an angle, okay? We're not directly on the sacrum. My hand is to the lateral edge. For us, I join this right here, okay? And what we do, it's kind of a throw and a catch. It's not a rocking, it is not a bum rub. Oh my goodness, don't let me see you rubbing bums, I won't be happy. Hand stays planted firmly, okay? And it's a rock and a catch. A rock and a catch. It looks simple, this is not simple. There's a reason why I've saved this till the last day. This is not an easy technique. It looks very simple. So from here, you can also see where her restriction lies, right? Everything moves nicely, and she doesn't move right here. None of this is coming from my wrist. It's coming from my shoulder and my elbow. You start pumping like this, it's wrong, okay? And it's a gentle rock and catch. You can spend an hour doing this and people will love you. This is worth the price of admission if you do it correctly, okay? And this is stimulating the parasympathetic? This is also helping during the spinal cord. Do this at the end of all your treatments, okay? Because if you're opening diaphragms and somebody has some sort of vascular stasis, this is going to help drain everything, okay? And that's what we want. Again, you can place your other hand on them so they don't wonder what you're doing. Engage. How's she moving? How do the SPs feel? How's her respiration? She doesn't move here. So that tells me, okay, maybe I want to work ribs. Maybe I want to work scat. Maybe I want to do some soft tissue stuff through here. I need to mobilize her thorax. And then if you change her arms and bring her arms to the back, what does that do? Does it change the way she moves? A little bit. How is this? How does this feel? <laughs> it's very gentle. It's not aggressive at all. There's not a lot of pressure here. Okay? If your hand and arm start to hurt, you're doing it wrong. Here. Put your hand on it. I'm not pushing, I'm stabilizing, right? And then and work it right up through. You guys have been shown this. This is all stuff we know, right? And again, if we weren't finishing a treatment and you just kind of threw this in to see where she was restricted, keep in mind, palpate her pelvis, palpate her sacrum, keep in mind she had the anonymous torsion. Check her sacrum, how does it feel? Okay? Glutes are insanely tight on this side. Your formus is tight. Come in. A bunch of different things you can do, right? This is soft tissue, which is why I'm moving a little bit quicker. If you were doing a mobilization, you wouldn't move so fast. 
check her hip flexors. Right. Do some MET, okay. Push your leg out straight. Here, make sure you're not putting too much pressure into the long arms. You don't have to have your knee underneath. I'm just doing that to get some psoas involvement because it's tight on that side. Push your leg out straight for me. Relax. Again, if you have a bigger person on your table or an athletic person, make sure you tell them to use 10% of their strength or they're going to send you across the room. Do that a few times. Knee goes down, reassess, see how she's moving. Right? Oscillations. Let's track. Okay, body up, body down. Let's give it a go. It's going to take a little bit to master. So, might as well throw it out. Yeah, you've got a coffee.